let's get started. Um, hello, folks, and welcome. Um, this is Kapil Gupta, VP of Engineering at Yugabyte. And we are back again with another episode of the Yugabyte DB Friday Tech Talks. So the way this goes is each week, So the way this goes is each week we pick a topic and we go deep into it. Typically, we try to have the actual engineer who built the feature so you can hear from the horse's mouth, so to speak, and ask questions. Index. I think there's an echo going on. And Index. I think there's some echo going on. Sorry about that. We just have some echo here. Sorry, I think we have fixed it. My apologies. Um, indexes, of course, are very important, both in relational and NoSQL databases. The session today is about online indexing um, related to how indexes are built. And I have, I have here with me Jason, the lead engineer who actually built online indexes in Yogabyte DB. I'll get Jason to introduce himself in just a second, and we can get this kicked off. Um, if you folks have questions, you can feel free to ask in the LinkedIn chat and Jason and I will answer them. We are monitoring it live. Um, so Jason, maybe let's get started with a quick introduction and we can uh, then get into what online indexing is all about. Yeah, sure. Hi, I'm Jason and this is my second WebTT talk. The uh, previous one was gen indexes, generalized inverted indexes. I think that was like around a year ago. And yeah, I've been here almost four years in Yugabyte. And index, online index creation is something I worked on with uh, someone else about two or three years ago. So yeah, let me start presenting. OK, yeah, here's the slides. And yeah, so today's talk is going to be about online index creation. Yeah, so first of all, let's just go over what a secondary index is and what creates it. So some statements on the left side, they don't create a secondary index. So first one, it's creating a primary key. And it creates a primary key index, but in Yugabyte, it, the primary key and the table share the same storage. Similarly, the second uh, statement, the unique constraint matches the primary key, so it become, ends up becoming a single primary key index anyway, and that does not end up creating a secondary index. You can also alter the table to add a primary key to a table that didn't have a primary key, but that will just rewrite the original table to a new table, so you don't have a secondary index as well in that case. And Jason, for just you know, some of our viewers who might be new to relational databases, um, can you talk about why the unique um, keyword there ends up creating an index? Oh yeah, so yeah, unlike the one where you have a primary key and unique that match, if you just have a unique constraint and the table doesn't have a primary key, then the table it will there will be a table, but there will also be a unique constraint that will be created as a secondary index. And in the second case, you have the unique constraint that is partitioned with i in a hash partitioning scheme, and then the primary key index is ascending, so it's a range. So since they don't match, this will also create a secondary index for the unique constraint. And then lastly, the regular just create index will also Create a secondary index. 
Yeah, and so with that in mind, some key points about today's talk, that secondary index creation is an online operation. So that means it can handle concurrent reads and writes to the table while it's being created. And also you can have pre-existing data in the table before you create the index and those will, the entries will get backfilled into the index. It supports both YSQL and YSQL APIs and works across like all the different flavors of indexes, unique indexes, partial indexes, expression indexes, and gen indexes. And it also has options to rate limit and draw to the backfill. Jason, um, one question that I often see come up, especially from people who are new to distributed SQL is, will this scale? You know, say I have like a hundred node cluster with a really large table, will the online creation of index scale? Yeah, so the way the backfill process works, it will parallelize it into different workers for each tablet of the table. So yeah, you can think if the table is evenly sharded across different nodes, then each node will do its own backfilling work in parallel with other nodes. Good question. Yeah, so a little bit into the YSQL index creation. So the Ugolite's grammar for create index is a little different from upstream Postgres. So if you just say create index, then in Postgres, it will be non-concurrent, meaning it won't uh, allow online reads or writes to happen at the same time. Whereas in Ugobyte, it will be concurrent, except for some exceptions where it will then fall back to non-concurrent. If you specify create index with concurrently in the syntax, then Postgres will make it concurrent, and also Ugobyte will make it concurrent. And if it can't, then it will error out. And you might introduce a create index non concurrently syntax to be able to always choose a non concurrent case. And Postgres doesn't have this. So, a little bit more about the default just bare create index uh, syntax. So, it will try to, uh, so it, it will be non concurrent in these cases where you're running the create index in the transaction block or the table is like partitioned like by list, by range, the, the Postgres syntax. Uh, get the Postgres feature of partitioning. And then also there's this uh, G plug, uh, I mean, uh, YSQL, uh, sorry, G plug is a devout, devout term, but yeah, uh, the YB master, YB T server flag, YSQL disable index backfill. If that's set to true, then uh, create index will be defaulting to non-concurrent. Otherwise, it, would, it should be concurrent. OK, let's do a little demo of some MySQL create index. So first, let me create a table or a cluster first. So Yes, and if I'll it's just use YBTQ. Too much trouble, could you maybe make the font a little bit bigger if it is possible? Sure. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, I just created a cluster and then let's connect. And I have this, I'm using the same table as in my gen index talk. So it's a Jeopardy data set. That I just found online. And I'll just take the last 5,000 entries of that data set. And uh, let's show a little bit of what this table looks like. So, yeah, round, value, daily double, category, comments, answer, question. The area day and some notes. And here are some examples. And now let's create an index. And just to be explicit, go as well as concurrently. And the index will have an answer, question, 
and the month of the air date. So this shows, so this will be in like an expression index. Also, it's, it's a partial index because it has a, like it only wants to take rows where the comments or the notes are not empty. Let's create that. Okay, and then yeah, let's just do some explain select. So this select where we just select the answer in the question with the same condition, we'll use index. And also this select where it's a little different. So one thing to keep um, pay attention to this one is I'm using an and condition. So it's not the same, the same uh, condition as the index. So it's using a sequential scan, but logically you can think this condition is like a, a subset of the or, con the or condition. So why is this not using the index? And that's because we didn't analyze the table. So let's just first analyze the table and then the costing will change a little bit. Now the index is preferred to be used instead. And let's, let's do a select of it just to show values and set some rows to show dates to actually have those same counts as it previously reported. Okay. And while we were creating the index, um, you know, other operations could be being done concurrently at the same time on that table, and that would be fine. Yeah, we'll get to that in um, a further slide. Perfect. But before that, let's do a little bit about the observability. So there are different observability options for the index creation. And for YSQL and YCQL, you have this uh, master web server slash tasks page. So let's just go to that right now. So in YBC till it defaults to 1.7001 and 7,000. But other than that, the defaults are uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, and then 7,000. So this is the master web server page and the, the tasks page. You can also go to the, this page of utils and tasks. And then we'll see like a backfill table job. So this one already completed, this one we just did. And yeah, um, for this observably demo, I'm going to recreate the cluster to, this is just to make it so that the updates to the, the like the workers will update their progress more frequently. So every five seconds instead of the default every minute. Wait for that to finish and then yeah, so I'll just create a table. Copy just a million rows into it. So we have enough time to look at progress while it's creating. This is taking a while. You can see the, the server is hard at work. While this is happening, could you maybe touch on like partial indexes? Again, for viewers who might be new to relational databases, why are they useful? Oh yeah. This is what have been great to bring up in the, the Jeopardy example. So in the, the Jeopardy table, a lot of these so if you were only interested in rows that didn't have, like that had a comment or a note, then the majority of those rows like were, didn't have it or they were empty. So if you just built an index that wasn't partial, then it would end up having to scan through a bunch of rows that are not meaningful. But by creating a partial index, you have a lot less rows to scan through to match your conditions. So it's more, it's, it's faster, but yeah, this copy is done. So yeah, I'll, oh, that's the wrong one. 
So let's just create an index on this and then I'll just monitor the progress on this page. So I'll just keep refreshing. So now we see this top with it's zero rows done right now, but if I refresh, it says it got 200,000 rows. I keep refreshing, 500,000 rows. Also, these are the two uh, workers for, there's two tablets of the table, but yeah, now it's finished. I'm gonna do the same for, uh, let me go back to the slides. So you can also see the progress with a YSQL view. Copy that progress create index. And so for that one, I'm going to run this periodic command. Every second, I'm going to run a select on that view. And let me, yeah. I'll just run that and then let's create an index. And so this starts showing up. You have the tuples done here, and this thing is gradually incrementing. The tuples done is zero though, so why is that? Well, again, that's because we didn't analyze the table. So again, analyze the table so we can get some stats on it to get the tuples done, for example, and then now we have an estimate of how many tuples are done, or a total to refer to. So it's an estimate because that's what Analyze does for like efficiency. Okay. Yeah, the next demo is a concurrency demo. So in this, I'll just have a thread doing a create index and a thread doing some inserts. And then you'll see that the all the inserts like while it was happening, it still ended up creating a consistent index. So for that, uh, let's create a new database to get a fresh start. Let's create some table. And then I'll prepare this thread to do the inserts. And then the create index. So let's run this and then create an index on gray. Oh, it's having trouble creating the index. Uh oh. So it looks like they didn't, didn't manage to create the index. So next, let's try the concurrently case. So let me just drop the table and let's recreate the table. And then creating it concurrently works while it's doing inserts. And then let's yeah, run the query to show that there are no inconsistencies. Um, yeah, just to, people can review this query later in the recording, but just to show, just briefly touch on it is that I'm doing a select from the table, which is this. And the select from the index is this one. And then, yeah, just comparing the two and seeing that they match up. Okay. Another demo for wide scale is uh, just some performance um, tips. So you should try to build an index non concurrently when it's possible. And one easy case where you can do this is if the table is empty and there will be no concurrent operations. Because building it non concurrently has a lot less overhead. I'll just, just briefly go over, for example, if you uh, create, an, let's turn the timing on and create an index on the table. So this will be concurrently and takes 2.5 seconds. But if I create index non concurrently, it's, it's a lot faster. So Try to do this if you don't need to. Uh, yeah, if it's like an obvious case. And also make sure you drop invalid indexes because they will incur a write penalty. So to demonstrate that, I'll just create a new database. OK, 
get a table and insert some values. And then I'll create an index that hits a duplicate validation because the I column has both one and one. And we can see with the uh, like backslash three that the table, the index is still here and it's invalid. So you, sh you should get rid of it, but let's see what happens if you uh, try to do an, just an insert, some inserts into the table with this invalid index in present. So this takes around 45 seconds or milliseconds. But up the index and try it again. And now it only takes like 25 milliseconds because it doesn't have the overhead of doing internal operations related to this partially created index. This is excellent. And this is also related to a question we got from one of the LinkedIn viewers. Um, basically, the question is, you know, how can we take CSV files and kind of load them into the main table and uh, index them um, dynamically? So, um, I think you just explained how by using the concurrent uh, option, you can load copy data into the main table at the same time as the index is being created. But yeah, so excellent. Yeah, it was a question more about the data. So is this from different CSV files? It's about different CSV files. Okay, I think, yeah, I'm not exactly sure how to answer the particular like question, but so I'll just move on and yeah, you can discuss more about it in like the YFTT Slack channel, for example. But yeah, moving on to a YCQL demo. So yeah, YCQL also supports the online index creation. So let's first get into MySQLSH. Let's just create some key space. Okay, so in order to create these indexes, you need the with transactions enabled true. And I just create some multi column table. And then creating an index on it. So yeah, YCQL supports, you can have like AK partitioning column, and these are this is hashed, and L. Uh, so this is a descending ordered column. You can also have partial indexes with MySQL, and like all sorts of like just about how many tablets it will be, which is you can also do with MySQL. But yeah, so very a lot of things you can do. Let's just do a partial few. indexes are supported both in YSQL and in YSQL. Great. Yeah, same for number of tablets. You can just do a split into or split at values syntax for YSQL. But yeah, so some select. So this matches the L condition and the, the partial index condition. So it's using an index scan. And if it doesn't match, then we'll use a sequential scan. And this is just selecting additional columns, J and K, and those will be passed into the index scan. And one thing about YSQL that's different from YSQL is that it has the deferred index creation feature. So you want to do this when you want to create multiple indexes on the same table in a single pass. So meaning like you're scanning the table in order to do the backfill only one time and then backfilling data into multiple indexes in parallel. So the setup for this demo will be that I'll just create a table and insert this value into it and then create some deferred indexes and then finally create an index without the deferred syntax. And then this will trigger the backfilling of all three indexes. You got to demo that capability. That that's great. Really looking forward. Yeah. So let's just create a new table with some 
in different types of columns. Enter the row into it and then create the first deferred index, the second deferred index. And then just to prove that the indexes weren't created yet, let's do an explain of the select. And yeah, you can see it's still using a sequential scan. So, but then if we finally do the great index, that triggers the deferred indexes to create as well. Now the explain will show an index scan. And then yeah, just to prove that it's properly scanning, it's, here's the row right here. Also with YCQL, like you have the, the desk command to see information about the table. So you can see the three indexes here. So if you have a large table and you are you know, doing index creation on three or four columns, you can do it all in a single pass uh, on the yeah. right table. Very good. Yeah, this time we just only had one row, but it will be very useful when you have lots of data. So you don't have to spend hours three times. Instead, you can only spend it one time. Okay. And finally, just a little bit about the rate limiting of index creation. So both YSQL and MySQL support rate limiting, and they're controlled by these YBT server flags. The first is the num concurrent backfills allowed. So it's a per T server limit on the number of simultaneous backfill jobs on that node. And by default, you can only have, uh, it will be auto um, calculated based on the number of CPU cores. And this is typically the number of cores divided by two. So, so this, yeah, so it limits how many backfill jobs across, like you can have multiple different create indexes that each create their own set of backfill jobs. And this is just a, like a global limit on that. And then backfill index rate rows per second. This will con uh, control the rate of the backfill for each worker. And by default, it's unlimited. Yeah, how are we on time? I don't have a demo for this, but yeah, I think. You're doing well. Yeah. You, you have time for the demo. No, I think uh, okay. we'll just have questions for now. Just open so up using, the the, using the flags that you showed uh, in the earlier slide, could, could you maybe go back to that earlier slide just for a moment? Yeah, so using these knobs, you know, you can control uh, how many resources to allocate to the index creation and how many to your main workload, um, which is very useful. Yeah, like let's say your system's already overloaded, then you might want to scale down the the backflow rate, for example, to be a little slower. Yeah, I love it. The fact that you have gave so many different demos in this talk. Uh, you know, demos are always more fun, uh, more fun to watch and more fun to learn from. Uh, and uh, you know, you covered the wide surface area related to the uh, to the index creation, partial indexes, um, how to defer them. So really excellent. So thank you, Jason, for joining us today um, and for giving your talk. Um, thank you, folks, for joining us today. See you next week on another episode of IFTT. Um, we do encourage you to join our community channel if you have further questions. It is listed on the final slide there. Basically, it is yugabyte.com forward slash Slack. And then within that, you can go into the YFTT channel um, and then post your questions. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.